What's up guys? Welcome back to Transportal in the studio with me, Everlight. Now today I have a very special episode. If you are a newcomer to trance music production, today we are going to be talking about the basics of trance sound design. I'm going to be diving into one of my favorite synthesizers and covering the essential options and settings inside of that synthesizer that are used to create trance-like sounds. So if you're a newcomer and up until now you've been relying heavily on presets and pre-created sounds and you would like to learn how to modify those sounds or how to create your own from scratch, then this is the place to start. Now this episode is extra special because the air date of this video is the 3rd of June, which is my birthday. So to celebrate my birthday, as part of this video, I'm giving away a small collection of presets for Zephyr Serum, which is the synthesizer that I'm going to be using in this video. Well guys, let's get into the studio and I'll show you how it's done. So here we are inside of Ableton, we have Serum open, I have my SpaceX command headphones on and I am ready to go. So to demonstrate each of my points, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a preset from Serum and then I'm going to demonstrate a way that we can change that preset and make it sound more trance-like and the different options that I, that I use in order to do that. So that you can take presets that you find on your synthesizer and change them in similar ways to what I have and get something that sounds a little bit more trancey. So here I have a pad preset which I've loaded. It sounds like this. Doesn't sound too bad. It's got a nice little bit of warmth to it but it's sounding quite thin. It doesn't sound like a big open trance pad that you might find in like a big trance breakdown or something like that, but we can change that with a few simple tweaks. So the main thing we're going to be looking at is something called unison and detune, voice unison and voice detune. In Serum, the voice unison and voice detune controls are found on each individual oscillator. You can see them here on oscillator B uh, and on oscillator B here. They are controlled separately. For this particular preset, this patch, we only have to look at the one oscillator as oscillator B is turned off. In order to make this pad sound more wide, then it's a simple case of modifying the voice unison and modifying the detune. Now I can see here that there are already quite a few voices uh, on here. Normally what you would do is you would first start by turning the voices up. So let me show you what that sounds like. At the moment it's not having too much of an effect. The reason for that is because we need to also detune those voices. When we add, when we use these two in combination, we can achieve a sound that sounds a lot wider. So I'm going to go ahead and move the detune up and show you what that sounds like. Turn the voices up too. And now we have something that's sounding more trance-like. So here I've loaded the sound, which is actually a trance-specific pad already. Sounds like this. And what I want to do with this pad sound is I want to change it into a different kind of sound. I want to change this into something that you could use as a lead sound, something that you could use that's quick and fast paced. So to do that, we need to focus on what's known as the envelopes. In most synthesizers, the first two envelopes normally control the same things. The first one is the amplitude, which is the volume. And the second one is the filter, which is this filter over here. So this is like how the sound opens up. So when I press this, you can hear that there is a slow filter rise from an envelope, which you can see here. When I hold these buttons, you can hear it gradually opening up. That's achieved using these envelopes. We can modify these envelopes to make that quicker, to make it snappier. So in order to do that, we need to reduce the attack. The attack is how long it takes for the filter to come up. So we don't want any kind of rise at all. We want it to start right at the very top. So I'll go ahead and turn the attack all the way down. And now when I press it, the sound will start immediately. 
the next thing we want to do is we want to make those notes super short and snappy and punchy. For that, we use decay and sustain. So we'll also need to be using the release here. So the first thing to do is try working backwards. We'll turn the release down. Now what will happen is I will press the note and then when I release the note, it will immediately stop. As you can hear. Now what we need to do is need to get that punch so that when we press the note, it just goes snap. To do that, we turn the sustain down and then we start to begin to turn the decay down. Now when I press one of the keys here, we have something short and snappy. Now here we have a lead preset, sounds like this. And what we want to do here is turn this lead into a bass line. So the first place to start is with the filter. At the moment, this sound is very bright. If I turn this filter down, it will start to dull it off. The next thing we want to do is we want to reduce, we want to bring the note right down. We want to make it nice and low. You can simply play a lower key on your keyboard, bring it down an octave or two if you wanted. But a more effective way I find is to use the octave controls on the oscillator. So I could just bring this down one or two. Let's try one. Let's try two. Two probably works better for a bass line here, I think. So now we've got something that sounds a little bit more like a bass line, but it needs that punch, it needs that bite. So first thing we need to do is we need to actually narrow the sound. We need to make it narrower. This is the opposite of what we did with the pad to a bigger trans pad. So to do this, we will take the unison, we'll turn it right down. And now we've just got nice, thin and narrow. And then the final piece to this puzzle is the envelope. So we're gonna give it a little bit of bite on the envelope. We need to take this envelope here. We need to drag it to the cutoff. Uh, and now what will happen if you want to know more information about exactly how the envelopes, the filter envelopes work for a baseline, there is a separate Transportal in the Studio video with myself where I go over creating a trans rolling bass. If you want to know more information, then you can check that out. But now we have a similar sound. Let's turn the filter down a little bit. And there we go. We now have a baseline. This time we have a dubstep style bass line. It sounds like this. And we want to convert it into a trance style bass line. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of that characteristic dubstep wobble. Now, the majority of the time when you're looking at dubstep samples or presets that have that wobble, that wobble is achieved using an LFO. You need to clear that LFO to get to the core of the sound without the wobble, and then we can modify it from there. So the first thing to do is to identify which LFO is giving it the wobble. In this case, I believe it's LFO 1. If I click it, you can see all the parameters that it's associated to. In this case, the blue semicircle appears on the cutoff. And indeed, if I play a note, you can see that it's affecting the cutoff there. So to clear that, you simply right click and go remove all destinations. And now the wobble is gone. We also need to modify the filter envelope similar to the last sound. So we need to make it nice and punchy. So we need to put a new envelope onto the cutoff. So let's go with envelope two, drag and drop that onto the cutoff. You can see that a semicircle appears, a blue semicircle. In this case, we want to bring it down a little bit. And let's just hear what that sounds like. Okay, so we need to give it a bit of punch. So to do that, we need to modify the decay and the sustain. So we're going to bring the sustain right down. Let's turn the cutoff up so that we can hear that sound brighter. 
and now we want to turn the decay down to something nice and punchy. And now we have something that's been converted from a dubstep sound to something that you could probably use in a trance track. And finally, this time we have a very basic bass line. And we're going to convert it into a lead sound that's nice and big and wide. First thing we need to do is to make the sound play notes to the higher. You can see in the controls on oscillator A and B that the octave is set to minus one. So let's go ahead and move that up to zero. Now it sounds higher. The next thing is to modify the unison and detune controls like we did with our pad. So we're going to bring these up. And then finally, the last thing that we want to do is modify the cutoff. And that's a really quick and easy way that you can take a bass line and get it to sound like a lead. And guys, I could go on all day with taking different examples and showing you how to turn them into different kinds of sounds because I love doing this sort of stuff. But unfortunately, I do not have the time for that. That's everything I've got the time to show you today. I hope you have found this video informative and do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the Transportal YouTube channel. And before you leave, make sure you check out the link in the description to the free preset pack which I am giving away as part of my birthday. It is for Zephyr Serum. So you guys can take some of the sounds that I've used in my upcoming album Lightspeed and use them to whatever end you wish. Guys, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all again very soon.